nothing that's happening today is anything new. This is not something that the church haven't been through before. It's not something that uh, people weren't doing before. But now things are happening on a level that's just extreme. And it's crazy because the things that are acceptable now and the things that are going on now would never have been allowed years ago. And I'm not trying to say I'm all that old or anything like that, but the things that are happening now and the things that are going on now is to an extreme. And we, as the body of Christ is sitting back, not everybody. So when, when I'm talking tonight, I'm not talking to everybody and I'm not talking about every church, but I just feel like we, as the body of Christ are sitting back allowing the enemy and allowing just any and everything to happen. And we are supposed to sit back with our mouth shut or turn the deaf ear and a blind eye to what's actually happening with the body of Christ. There are organizations out there that are supposed to be representing the body of Christ. There are people that are supposed to be representing the body of Christ and representing Jesus Christ. And it is turning into turmoil. It is turning into a certain And we as the body of Christ, when are we going to take a stand and say enough is enough that 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 these people that are doing these things and these organizations that are doing these things? No, they do not represent the full body of Christ. And I'm so sick and tired of hearing the human card as, oh, we're all human. We're all, we all make mistakes. Yes, we all human. We all make mistakes. We all go through trials. We all go through tribulations, but we have to understand. And especially at this moment right here, I'm talking to those who are in leadership and those who are holding these titles and positions. You have to understand that when you say yes to God, uh, now there is a, there's a, there's a higher standard. There's even a passage of scripture that says that those who basically are in leadership or those that are preaching or leading others, you're going to be beat with many more stripes because you know better. We know better. So we take these titles and we take these positions and then we want to throw the, oh, I'm only human card. No, when we say yes to Jesus, that means I have to put my emotions to the side. I have to put my feelings about some things to the side. Could you guys imagine if I got on social media and said everything that was going through my mind? Could you imagine if I got on social media and, and, and when the, whatever I'm going through, I just blast it out on here? No, beloveds, we are held to a higher standard. We are held to uphold holiness. And again, I'm not saying no one could be human. I'm not saying that we're not supposed to feel anything, but we have a way that we are supposed to handle what we're feeling. We have a way that we are supposed to handle our emotions and going on social media or going to our churches and lashing out and doing all these things. God is not pleased with that. God is not pleased. That's why we often talk about sitting down with your leaders and your elders and have accountability people, even if you need a therapist, because many of us in ministry, you're working off your feelings and your emotions and it's causing people to go astray. If you're dealing with issues on the inside, the house of God's pulpit is not the place to deal with it. Oh, I'm going to say that again. Us leaders, us people who's holding titles or positions, those who say God called you. The pulpit is not the place to vent our feelings. Go sit on the couch and vent your feelings. Go into prayer and to fasting and tell God how you feel or go to your accountability people and let them help you. But now any and everything is going on in the place that we call the house of God. And this is a concern, beloved. Is anybody concerned? One moment we get in a preaching. Next moment we venting our feelings and acting a fool and acting a muck. And so now they looking at us like these people must be schizophrenic. Out of one mouth is blessings. Out of the next mouth is cursings. Come on. We have to call these things out. And we have to be accountable to God's house and to each other. 
We can't live any kind of way. Once we accepted the call of Christ on our lives, we have made the decision that we can't live it any type of way. There is a way to handle issues. There's a way, once again, to handle our feelings, our emotions and things that are going on in our lives. But no, we live in any kind of way, doing whatever we want to do. Getting into God's sacred pulpits, cursing. (sighs) Listen, I really don't care if somebody may feel like, oh, don't be judgmental. Don't I'm not for the judgmental card tonight. Yes. Yes. We have a right to be spiritually angry because I never thought the day would come where we be approving or, 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 or sitting there allowing cussing to be going forth and cursing each other out and all these things in the pulpit, not even outside the church, but in the pulpit, where is the accountability? Where is the person saying, listen, something is going on. You might have to sit down for a moment. You might have to get yourself together for a moment. Where is this going on? Where is this happening? But it's amazing. Because we only concerned about the prophetic words and all this stuff. But then the same mouth that prophecy is coming out of, cursing is coming out of. The same mouth that's speaking the good news and the the glad tidings of Jesus, cursing is coming out of it. Come on. And now it's not something that's under the rug like back in the day. Because nowadays everybody just about have a camera. Our local churches are not any longer our local churches because somebody got a camera somewhere and the enemy had them off somewhere recording you and you'll be done said the wrong thing at the wrong time and it can now damage your witness. Are we not discerning the tricks of the enemy? And now it's coming in the churches where the preachers think it's okay to curse and to cuss. And the, and the, roll your tongue and tongues out the same mouth. God is not pleased with that, beloved. I mean, I can't be the only one bugging out. I can't be the only one like God. I, 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 like people got to understand this. Now, am I sitting here saying I'm perfect? No, I got a lot of issues. But thank God I don't use the pulpit platform as a way to deal with the issues, beloved. There is so many people live. There are souls at stake. And anytime foolery is happening and you have other leadership sitting around and no one get up and say anything. No one pulled the plug on anything. It makes me wonder what is going on with the body of Christ. What is happening to the body of Christ? I tell you, it's because any and everybody could say they called and chosen. They'll create a church and all this havoc could be happening. And we sit back like if it's normal. This is the norm. It's okay. It's okay. Let God deal. No, the Bible does not say let God deal with them. We as children of God, we supposed to be accountable to each other. And if we even follow the apostle Paul, (laughs) he was even harsher. Like, We nowadays would be like, listen, sister, brother, let's have a seat. Let's have a moment till you get yourself together. But Paul said, listen, go to them. And if they don't listen, kick them out. That's what Paul said. But thank God for grace and mercy. We don't really do that nowadays. We don't just kick people out. We understand that people are dealing with issues. But once again, the pulpit and the house of God is not the place to vent our issues. Some people you don't know, they coming from the streets, from alcohol and addictions and all type of things. And then we as preachers and ministers get up in a pulpit and, 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 and cause havoc. How does that make us look, beloved? How is that representing Jesus Christ? I'll tell you, it's not representing Jesus Christ. Why? Let's go to Rome. Let's go. Let's go here. Romans 12. Let's go to Romans 12 because I'm not going to just sit and talk. I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Let's go to Romans 12 because I know a lot of people are always in their feelings and oh, we all human. We all make mistakes. Yes, we do. But some mistakes is going to cost you. Some mistakes is going to cost you your ministry. Some mistakes is going to cause somebody else to fall astray. So we have to be careful. Those of us that are in leadership, those of us that are professing the name of Jesus Christ, we have to be careful. We have to be, beloved. Let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans 12. 12, Romans 12, real quickly, 
because we have to get this in our mind that although we may have our moments and go through our feelings, we have to guess what? We have to be different from the world. Did we forget about the scripture of presenting our bodies? It says, Romans 12, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And this the part right here, beloved, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we can't be doing things the way the world does it. It is, and I, I'm telling you guys, and especially us ministers, it is not okay to be cussing. It's not okay. It's not. Take your feelings to the altar. Take your feelings to the therapist. Take your feelings to the, to, to the elder boy or the mothers or whoever you need to go to. It is not okay. It is not. That's the things we did when we was in the world. The thing, how we handle things in the world is not the way it's supposed to be when we are on the Lord's side now. We don't handle things the way we used to. The Bible said when you're in Christ, you're a new creature. All things are passed away. All things are become new. Your life is new now. Once you said yes to God, you said, God, I accept this ministry. I accept this call on my life. Now you can't do the things you used to do. You can't act the way you used to act. You can't lash out and say things the way you used to do it and handle things the way you used to handle it. Because now you're representing Christ. You're representing the body of Christ as a whole. And nowadays what happened is when you find these organizations or you'll find these people doing these things, now the whole body is thrown into the same bag because now you want to have cussing and cursing preachers. You want to have lying and sleeping around and committing adultery pastors, touching boys and girls, all these things happening in the house of God. So let's stop pushing it under the rug and let's reprimand these people. Let's say enough is enough. When are we as the church of God going to say enough is enough? God said his house is a house of prayer. It's a house of prayer. And the thing about it is too many people opened up their own church. It's their church. It's not God's church. And I'm going to take a sip of water on that. That's the problem. People open up their church. It's not God's church. Because whenever it's God's church, God is the head. God is in control. But the problem is many people don't have any type of covering or leadership over them to tell them, listen, sir, or listen, ma'am, you can't be doing this in the pulpit. Or you can't be doing this and that and still trying to lead God's people. There are people that are looking at us and say, oh, well, (laughs) hey, they cussing in their own pulpits. Why should I even bother walking in the church? (laughs) Cussing in the street, cussing in the church. Committing adultery in the street, in the church. What's the, what's the difference? Come on. We supposed to be different, beloved. Come on. Let me go here to Ephesians. Y'all don't believe me. Oh, it's just a word. No, it's not just a word, beloved. Ephesians 429. The Amplified says this. Do not let unwholesome, foul, profane, worthless, rogue words come out of your mouth. This is the Bible, beloved. But only such speech as is good for building up of others according to the need and to the occasion so that it will be a blessing to those who hear you. We can't have blessings and curses coming out of the same mouth and not just blessings and curses, but blessing and cussing either. We can't be sleeping around and then want to get up and, and, and hold the sacred word telling other people what to do. But then we going home in our closet. Come on, somebody. It's time to sound the trumpet. If you can't handle the heat, guess what? Step down. Yeah, I'm going to take a sip of water on that. Ministry is not easy. Of course, you're going to have problems. People are going to come at you. They're going to try to distract you and deter you. They're going to scandalize your name, all type of things. If you can't take the heat, then get out the kitchen. But don't use God's house and cause havoc. And, and, and handle things your way and think it's okay, beloved. God is not pleased with that. Now we just accepting this culture. We accepting that everything is okay and it's not okay. When are we going to get back to the book, huh? Huh? 
Everything now is just a motivational speech to make us feel good. But when you're going to get to the point where you tell people you got to repent, where are you getting to the place where you got to tell people, listen, you can't keep doing things one day and then professing God the next. Come on.